Hello and welcome to another episode of Career Chat. I'm your host, Shannon Crooks, a librarian three with the Hillcrest Heights branch of the Prince George's County Memorial Library System. On today's show, we have Rudy Blanco. He is the Director of Entrepreneurship and Gaming Programs with the Dream Yard Project. He is going to tell us more about his career and his journey. Uh, we hope that this career chat inspires you to think about various careers that you may have thought um, of pursuing in the past or just maybe introduces you to a career that might be exciting to you. Right now during COVID, we understand a lot of people are unemployed and we're just hoping to inspire and motivate people throughout their career journey. Each and every Wednesday, we premiere a new episode. Sometimes we do reruns of previous episodes, but you can always catch us on Wednesdays at three on any of our social media platforms, or you can visit our YouTube channel for more information about previous videos that we filmed before. Okay, Rudy, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Shannon. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate that. I love careers and random pathways and different pathways. So I was really excited to be here. Yes, it's very interesting for us as well to hear about people's careers and their journey. So thank you. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. So Rudy, tell us as a entrepreneurship, a director of entrepreneurship and gaming programs, what are your job duties and responsibilities? Well, <laughs> it's a unique title. It is not a title that exists uh, left and right. It is definitely a title that um, I created myself over, you know, the span of 10 years working within the same company. And one of the things I hope to provide today is kind of just, you know, like advice and insight around how sometimes you can be working somewhere and it is completely possible to craft your own journey, uh, right, in your career and in your job um, experience. And my role as director of entrepreneurship and gaming, my responsibilities, if I were to briefly summarize, is I explore the intersection of gaming as a tool, but also as an industry and entrepreneurship and where they meet. And then we build programs to help young people, uh, help community members. Uh, we primarily serve um, K through 12, uh, but we also serve their families as well. So what we do is we try to find the intersect of those two because we find that gaming and entrepreneurship is a really sweet spot for intergenerational work, uh, right? So when you can make entrepreneurs out of young gamers, right? And then you have families that are entrepreneurs, and then you can get them to speak the same language. It turns out that your young gamer can actually use their platform to promote their family's business. And then it just creates a model that's just beautiful. And it was something that I foresaw about four or five years ago in doing the work with uh, our young people as a, you know, like as a tech teacher, I used to teach technology, I used to teach history and math, <laughs> I was a formal special education teacher before doing this. And um, from that came the idea of our people, our kids, they want to build things, they want to, you know, they want to make a difference, they want to build legacies. And and uh, formal education wasn't doing that. So over the years, a technology class turned into gaming groups, turned into starting businesses. And now um, I'm actually in our very first gaming space now that uh, we were able to open up here in the Bronx. Wow, that's very cool. <laughs> yeah, a lot of kids are gaming now. I noticed that in the library, they come and play, what is it, Roblox? Roblox. Like, <laughs> they're so addicted to Roblox. And a lot of parents and, you know, uh, educators are like, why do they want to be on this game? But actually, they could use those skills, you know, in entrepreneurship. So it's so interesting that you're doing that. Absolutely. And, and yeah, Roblox is definitely one of the big ones that I got a lot of questions about, but also Minecraft and Fortnite. Fortnite is another one that um, is really big. And we've been having a lot of conversations with parents, right, around, well, what does safety look like? Like, we're trying to figure out what are the concerns that parents have when their kids are in these spaces? Um, because we can't really go into a kid who's, we can't go and speak to young people about entrepreneurship when they honestly just want to play Roblox with their friends, right? <laughs> That's something that needs to grow over time. And what we've been finding with my work is that when you have young people coming in at, let's say, five, six years old, and they're partaking in, in safe, um, inclusive Roblox communities, right, playing with people their age, with educators and adults who also see this value, by the time they become 14 years old, right, and they start high school, they're already used to a, an online space that 
that seems real and that seems safer, but also by then they're also aware how many ways they can take their gaming and turn it into, you know, ventures, like actual ventures and brands that can take them beyond, um, you know, they're, they're just regular gaming experience. Yeah, that is so awesome. Um, I think that has a lot to do with what STEM and STEAM um, using gaming in that way. So that's so neat that you're working on that with the youth. Um, so how long have you been in this industry? Oof, um, uh, I used to do corporate. Uh, I used to do corporate human resources for banks like Morgan Stanley, Lehman Brothers before they went belly up. Like I worked at a couple of staffing agencies. And after a while, like sitting at behind a table wasn't quite for me. I'm too much of an energy person to be, you know, behind a table all the time. Um, and then I saw an advertisement on the train. I kid you not, I was not, I'm not playing. I was on the train, <laughs> fed up on my way home from work. And there's this ad and I remember it like yesterday. And it, right. It was like a all black background with bold white text that said, do you want to change the world? <laughs> that was it. I, I kid you not. It just said, do you want to change the world? Do you want to make a difference in the lives of people in your community? And then in really small fine print, apply to be a teaching fellow, <laughs> right? Wow. And I was like, okay, I, I guess, right? So I went, <laughs> clicked on the link and uh, for about six months, I went through this application process because I kept putting it off. I didn't, I felt like I was too good to be writing essays. This was when I was like about 24, to around 24 years old. Uh, so at the very beginning of my career and, and what I found was that, you know, I had a couple of folks that wanted to see me move on from corporate because they felt I was not doing my best there. Um, and they encouraged me to apply. And it is now 11 years that I've been in education. Um, I started at the Dream Yard Preparatory High School as okay. a special education history and math teacher. And uh, for three years, I taught with the Department of Ed. I was a sociology major and failing systems hurt me. And it, it hurts my heart to see our kids and our communities have to like wade through them. You know, like there's something personal about teaching an 11th grade history class to kids who are reading at third grade levels and then expected to pass exams that are not even written for them, right? It's written by people who have no sense of cultural, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. context. And I got tired of that. So I left the DOE and I proposed a tech coordinator position because uh, apparently that year, um, the, the city wanted to use computers to do standardized tests. Um, okay. We only had 20 computers in our school. Wow. We had 400 kids. We, we, did, we weren't prepared. And I told my principal, listen, I saw the opportunity. And I guess this is the advice for folks that want to craft their own journeys, right? And building a career is like, if you see a unique opportunity that you yourself can solve and you can turn it into a job description, you can pitch it either to your boss or to the people that support your school or your nonprofit. And what I did was I told her, I was like, listen, if in a year from now, the city comes and tells us that our kids need to take our standardized tests, you know, our state tests on these computers and we're not prepared, we're in big trouble. And they invested to bring on a tech coordinator. I spent mm -hmm. three years doing a uh, kind of getting the one-to-one, -one, getting laptops and tech into schools, mm -hmm. teaching Google apps for education, doing a lot of tech work. And then, uh, you know, like uh, five years of doing that. And then I decided that, you know, I think I could do more effort and more, you know, like uh, change from the nonprofit side. So I left the school to work mm -hmm. at the nonprofit to specifically train teachers, educators, teaching artists, how to use technology to, to I guess, teach transferable skills that then eventually turn into careers and jobs. And today, the last two years, actually, the gaming thing has gotten really, really, you know, like on the front end of my plate, like it's just extremely relevant. Our kids are constantly talking about it. And there's a lot of messed up stuff that's happening there around the lines of racism, sexism, you know, homophobia, transphobia, like really mess up things that not enough adults who are educators, right? Mm -hmm. And institutions like libraries and schools are paying enough attention to. Um, in reality, sometimes a kid that might have an issue um, that stemmed from something that happened in an online game, but because we as educators weren't thinking of that, right? Like things escalate and, and we bypass that. And so I've dedicated a lot of my work these last 10 years um, in just figuring out like, how do we really use relevant technology mm -hmm. right, to engage our young people? Um, and 
Sorry, that was long winded. <laughs> no, it, it's great information. A couple of things you said that stood out to me. You talked about how you went to your boss and you said, hey, here's the proposal. Here's the problem. Here's the solution. How can we make it happen? And I think so many people are afraid to do that. Um, they're afraid to say to their boss, hey, this is a problem that I see on an ongoing basis and I want to fix it. I have a solution um, and really promote that. A lot of times a boss just wants you to say there's an issue, and, mm -hmm. but they also really want a solution. Um, so I like that you did that. And I like that you're working with kids where they are. A lot of our parents, educators, you know, people in the community don't realize that children communicate through play whether it be <laughs> young teens um so gaming is their play so we have to find a way to use it to our advantage to help educate them um to help help talk to them about different societal issues that we're facing but you're right we as the adults have to understand their world in gaming to be able to do that um so that's so important i'm so glad you're doing that work Thank you, Shannon. And if I may, Shannon, too, it's like uh, one of the things I've learned specifically these last two years is that I've had to start changing language from, let's say, gaming to emerging media. It's kind of like code switching, right? Like, you know, you go someplace, you got to like talk a certain way or, you know, like uh, give a certain face in order to get the things that you need for your people. Um, mm -hmm. Right. And then at the end of the day, what I found is that whenever I spoke to investors, right, or educators or principals, the moment the G word came out my mouth, like gaming, <laughs> right? And I hate saying it like this, but it's real talk. Like I'm being mm -hmm. honest with you, right? For anyone who's watching this, who does this work around advocacy with gaming and tech, like the G word is almost like a sin for people that don't believe and understand what that means. So the word that I've been using is emerging media. Emerging. Right. And the moment I switched it up, girl, I'm going to tell you, you write this people down. was like, what is that? I was like, <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> then, you know, then I start telling them, well, you know, you know, YouTube, right. You know, like, like media production and gaming and music and entertainment. <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden it seems so much more um, accessible, right? And and then, you know, like, I can't tell my kids emerging media, because that won't resonate, right? But mm -hmm. when I flip it around and tell people, listen, like, a whole, I, I don't have the exact numbers, but a big chunk of jobs in the 21st century require skills in emerging media in order for you to produce and do things at, you know, a certain level. And, and I think that, you know, like, we found that nice niche, like, for example, we have kids now who don't necessarily game, but use Twitch, which is a gaming platform or not gaming. It's a streaming platform that mostly gamers use. Mm -hmm. But then doing my work, I found that we have young chefs or we have, uh, you know, a family who's been, uh, you know, like we have a mother who had been sewing for a while and was selling garments and another young person who likes doing art, right? And what happens is the moment you turn a camera on and then you stream it, you are now mm -hmm. also building an enterprise that has nothing to do with gaming, Right. But because of that lingo thing that I was telling you, people hear Twitch, they hear gaming, they hear gaming, then they turn off. Right. Mm -hmm. But as opposed to people here live streaming, right, mm -hmm. then they hear emerging media, then they hear, oh, my God, like this young person wants to create content to build a business. Great. Now funders and people want to get involved and mm -hmm. supervisors want to create positions <laughs> right yes. With kind of because it wasn't like I just went to my principal and was like hey here's the proposal like accept it like I had to think like a boss too mm. right and this goes for a lot of y'all like I went to my principal with look this is what I think we need this is where I think we can get the money mm. right um mm. and in that situation she liked it because it took something off of her plate having to do the research of where to find the salary needed to pick up you know, whatever change I was trying to propose. And mm -hmm. that is something you learn over time. But if you if you like where you work and you're cool with where you're at and you want to continue, knowing where the knowing that you cost something to someone and mm -hmm. how to change and shift and and also provide advice around how to like fund that, you know, is helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, funding is a huge barrier for a lot of organizations. Um, and I like that you went out yourself as an employee and said, hey, here's the money, you know, boss, what can we do? How can we, you know, work towards applying to get this money? Because it makes it a whole lot easier. 
Um, I also like the fact that you said emerging media. I'm going to start using that now. I did not hear those terms before until today. So I usually hear gaming, but now I'm going to say emerging media. And yeah, Twitch, when I hear Twitch, I, I think the same thing. That's just gaming. But um, there's a business that I follow. I won't say the name, but they sell um, plants online. And um, I follow his Facebook channel. And when someone buys a plant from him, they show the picture of the plant and they talk about it. And but one time he had a Twitch where he had a Monstera Deliciosa Albo. That's like the most expensive plant in the plant community right now. Um, sometimes it can range from thousands of dollars to hundreds of dollars. But he had a Twitch session where you could actually see the plant grow. Oh, and I wow. was like, wow, like from, you know, from the start to finish of a leaf coming out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I know you probably don't know about this plant, but I Googled it. I, I just, I'm looking at one right now as you're talking. <laughs> okay, so it has the beautiful white and the beautiful green. The white is the variegation of the leaf. So, you know, he had an audience watching it, you know, the whole time. And I was like, no one's going to watch this. But sure enough, people were watching day and night for the leaf to come out. Um, it was so exciting. So yeah, people can use Twitch in a lot of different ways. They don't uh, necessarily know about and yes to promote businesses and that's one thing the library is trying to tap into is how do we support all of the small businesses in achieving mm. their goals and one thing that's huge right now is technology a lot of us are home so we need to reach an audience from home to their homes mm -hmm. so we need to figure out how to use different platforms a lot of these platforms are free but people don't know how to use them so we're trying to figure out how can the library educate people on these different platforms because they're so important to promoting small business. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Shai, I'm going to propose something just based off of what you're telling me, right? Like it, it makes me think because this is exactly the type of work we do at DreamYard, right? And, and it's actually my role. Like how do we, right? And this is a big question we're dealing with now. Like how do we help local businesses while training young people to do something completely unrelated, right? And mm -hmm. this is what I found. And this isn't with DreamYard. This is actually with my company, the Bronx Game. I mean, it's all tied. This is what's amazing about where I work, right? Like when you find alignment with a company that believes in your values and the things you do, they mm -hmm. will fund it and they will help you, you know, grow that. And what's happening now is that I am in the middle of developing a course. Um, it's called the Entrepreneurship of Gameplay. Okay. Right. And it's meant to be a course, five sessions. Right. So five Saturdays, people pull up. And what happens is that these young people are eventually going to learn how to use Twitch first. That's the platform I chose because it's the easiest to monetize. Um, okay. Right. I've put a few young people through it. And within two months, you know, they were making about 50, 70 bucks. You know, it's a lot more gaming than they were making before. Right. So it's wow. enough to change that mindset. But what happens is that as we build more content creators, they mm -hmm. become influencers. And these influencers bring in ad dollars, right? Because just because we're doing this in the Bronx, we have audience in the UK, in Thailand, we have audience in the Philippines, in our own countries, right? Like the Bronx where I live, it's heavy Dominican people from the Dominican Republic. And they use Twitch and game in Dominican Republic. So what happens is when we convince our young streamers who are now imprinted by the success of having viewers and making money, right? And we tell them, hey, there's this network of bodegas in the Bronx that needs some advertisement, right? And we train them how to make commercials, right? And the store for a cent on the dollar can now afford advertising that they couldn't have before, right? It now opens up a completely different world of community made you know, like economic opportunity where right now what I'm trying to figure out is how do we get the group of local businesses that are willing to work with our streamers to have just commercials spit out because it's brand mm -hmm. awareness, you know, like um, mm -hmm. you can either be a business and not pay any ad and just be here or pay a small amount of money and have a network of like 50 streamers that are all local with viewership and, 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 and reach just talking about your business. And sometimes it's not even about talking about it. It's just maybe having the logo on the lower corner because some of these people are streaming for eight, nine hours at a time. Wow. 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 That's so awesome that you're getting young people involved. You're connecting small businesses to young people to do um, advertising, which is mm -hmm. so important. And then also small businesses, a lot of them, when they're starting off, they don't have a lot of money. 
um, to pay for a lot of things that corporations would pay for, for advertising, branding, marketing. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact that you're trying to get young people involved at a small fee to small businesses is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're giving back to their community. Young people can say a few years from now, hey, I had this amazing opportunity. I helped this company build their brand. This is what I want to do when they go to college. It can get them accepted into college or get them other internships. So it just opens up a world mm -hmm. of opportunities. And I think now more so than you know, years before, we need to help our young people realize what type of world <laughs> they live in. It is a digital <laughs> world. <laughs> And we need to help hone their <laughs> skills. They are very intelligent when it comes Work, to the yep. digital world. And we need to let them know that that is a career or can be a career later on in life and help them hone those skills. Mm -hmm. You see, but the trick I think for me too is not going in. And I almost, I, I joke about this a lot with my educator friends. It's like, it's the Trojan horse of learning, right? Like, here's the game. Oh my God, gaming and Fortnite and, you know, like all these great things. <laughs> but then once we're in, right, we then unpack like, yo, you want to help this bodega? You want to make some money, like making commercials for these people? Because what happens is that everybody who comes in thinks that the only way they can make money is by having a lot of viewers, right? Yeah. And having people liking and subscribing. When in reality, here's 20 bucks a week. It's not a lot, right? But 20 bucks a week, so long as you do a commercial for these three bodegas. And it's more than they would have ever made gaming, right? But then you add that to the revenue that's coming in from Twitch. And then the more people see that you're sponsored, more people come and more people show. And then more companies are going to want to, you know, so we need a company like the Bronx Gaming Network in place to make sure that our young people are not exploited, right? Because the moment influencers start being created the it's it's like it's like virtual gentrification i don't even know if that exists but it's digital gentrification you know once you start building digital capital which is mm -hmm. what we're doing in our community right grassroots capital mm -hmm. companies want in and then they want a piece and then they want to you know but when it's for us by us we don't need you <laughs> you yep, know yep, yep. y'all could give us the money but you're gonna do what we tell you to do not the <laughs> other way around you know exactly that is so important yeah a lot of youth yeah they say that i want this many viewers on instagram or i want this many viewers on youtube <laughs> and i'm like yeah but you know what are what message are you putting out there you know what are you influencing and you know they haven't really thought those things out they just want to get out there they see these youtubers making all this money and they just want to be like them or these influencers on instagram um, but i think having something that they're working towards to get them started you know will help them and also you said making that extra cash because some of them are putting content out there they're not making any money off of it or they're not, you know, learning something from it. So yeah. that's so awesome that you're, you're There's doing also that. the SEL, uh, the social emotional, you know, impact of, I was reading this article written by this group of psychologists around what is the social emotional psychological impact of playing video games, streaming it and having zero viewers, right? Um, and I read it naturally because it's in my niche, right? And it's what I do, but I read it because as an educator, I know for a fact how many of our kids are going live, whether it's on their PlayStation or whether it's on their computer, but zero viewers. Um, and I started digging in a little deeper and it turns out that even in my own wheelhouse, I had young people going through depression because, you know, like they were spending all this time gaming, but not enough people were, because like, because the reasoning is they game because, I mean, not just they game, right? Like we want to be seen. Mm -hmm. We're social beings, you know, like before you could go outside, you know, I, 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 I'm blessed that I grew up in the nineties where I can go outside, play some freeze tag, man. And people can still do this, right? <laughs> but like what you said, this is a new time, mm -hmm. right? Which means that we don't have young people today don't have the same luxury that we did in being able to say, yo, there's a game going on outside. Let's go. So then what happens when now you're in a virtual world, you're technically there with your friends, but nobody's watching what you're doing or nobody can see, you know, what impact you're having in this world. So people turn to streaming 
as a as a way to hope that their friends would stop by that maybe a family member would stop by and then what happens is that pe people go years doing this um and after many years you start internalizing the idea of nobody cares nobody wants to see me nobody wants to you know and and once i started the company and we started like getting viewership to our young people who were doing this stuff um the amount of stories of people who felt like their, you know, like their lives, you know, have changed or their lives were saved. Some people were on the borderline of, you know, suicide. And these are extreme cases, but mm -hmm. it's it's the stories we are hearing. Some people who were borderline COVID started were suicidal, you mm -hmm. know, and then and 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 streaming to nobody, you know, was not helping. And they were ready to go because if you remember when COVID first started, right? Like everybody was looking for, you know, like, oh my God, who am I gonna talk to? And and since then, mm -hmm. it's why I drove down. I realize that there are people out there going through it. Mm -hmm. They're going through it alone mm -hmm. and doing it live. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. Yeah, when um, I'm thinking back to when Facebook first introduced the live button. Uh, yeah, it, it's hard when you go out there and you can literally see people scrolling through. They might see you for a second and then they just keep going, you know. Yeah, and that can be heartbreaking for some people, you know, if they want to put content out there and nobody wants to watch it or nobody wants to interact with them. Even if you put a picture out there, some people spend a lot of time with making those selfies and nobody hits the like button. And then now Facebook has, you know, all those buttons. They have the like button, the heart button, the care button, the smiley face, the sad face the angry face. And then if you put something out there and someone hits one of those other faces that you didn't really like or emojis that you don't really like, it's hurtful. It does have an impact, you know, on your social emotional psyche. And it begins as early as, as early as a kid picks up a smartphone, which recently I was in an interview with a parent, like their kids started playing with the smartphone at around one year old, <laughs> you yeah. know? So like, think about that impact long-term. Emerging media matters, <laughs> you know, yes. it, it matters to matter. us as individuals and to us as a society, as a culture. And the fact that, you know, BIPOC and LGBTQIA plus people can't see themselves in the media that they're consuming is of utmost concern to me, right? Because then that means that the content that we're consuming and we're liking and sharing is, wasn't even created for us in the first place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it was just created to make somebody else some, I mean, I don't know. I have, I have issues and passions with that whole situation, <laughs> which is, I guess what brings us here today. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a relevant topic for today. Um, a lot of us are spending hours. Like I, sometimes I look at my phone, well, Apple tells you, oh, you've been on your phone this many hours per week. And I'm like, oh my God, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, maybe I need to. So sometimes I have to say, okay, put your phone down, Shannon. There's a whole nother world, yeah. hobbies, things for you to do. So yeah, it, it's, it's a huge part of our lives. And yeah, careers, you know, are focused a lot on how we use social media, emerging media, and we need to understand it. So viewers, if you are watching and you are, you know, into this, type of thing. Well, really, we all have to be now because we're digital. This could be a career for you. So think outside of the box, um, especially young people. You know, if this is of interest to you, maybe talk to your teachers or people in your community about how you can get involved and in using emerging media to help you learn how to hone in on some entrepreneur skills or just, you know, practice. Um, and so. um, Shannon, I dropped the, uh, so for those of you that are interested in learning more, um, you won't find much on this website, but we are getting our, uh, our newsletter on the way. So just uh, feel free to drop in um, to the Bronx Gaming Network website. And actually, Shannon, if you use this one, okay. yep. oh, hold on. Actually, let's look at this one here, Shannon, I'll send it to you right now. Okay. Slash. So I'm sharing my screen and let's try that one there. Okay. So, up. um, but yeah, this will link you out to our social media. We are putting together our programming, um, you know, pages <laughs> and information for that. So, um, this will give you a better sense of, you know, an opportunity to sign up for our email list. But if you scroll down, um, it'll give you a showing or a sampling of some of the content creators um, that we're currently working with who are local um, and who are using Twitch 
right now specifically for gaming, um, uh, but also folks who have been kind of doing the thing, right? So folks whom I've been working with over the last few months who started, you know, they wanted to stream, but they weren't completely sure. And then, you know, reached out to our network and since then have been able to, you know, like engage and grow their viewership and audiences in different ways. Because remember, anyone can jump on and stream, right? Mm -hmm. It's the community that you plug into that's going to determine and help you determine, you know, the direction in which you want to go, the audience that you want to speak to, right, and the things that you want to achieve. Um, that's what matters most. So that website, um, this is my Twitch channel. Uh, so this that's is the, cool. uh, I, um, as we show for a lot of folks, like I tell all of our content creators, like, if your content does have, you know, cuss words and things like that, you know, like we encourage folks to turn on their mature filters. Um, however, I'm very, very clear about moderating and making sure that what we're putting out there is stuff that is inclusive for the black and brown community, um, for the LGBT community, because again, we don't see ourselves as often as we should in these uh, arenas and in these spaces. Yes, this is great. Um... So viewers will include the links to these websites when um, this video goes live so that you can check it out. Excuse me, I'm, my throat got a little dry, no coughing. Um, but you can definitely check out this content along with this video. And then I'm also going to send um, you the link to DreamYard as well. Um, and they're the nonprofit that pretty much helped me kind of put all of this initiative and all this work together. Okay. And it. where I also work for. Okay. Wow, cool. Are these some of the kids that you worked with? Yeah, this was actually the, the cover image that you're looking at now. The first two were um, before COVID, we did a uh, what was called a dream fest, right? And uh, a festival where we invited over 60 local businesses to vend. Um, we did art showcases. My department held together uh, a gaming tournament, right? And, and we were able to do this amazing event. And since COVID, we turned more virtual, um, right? So Dream Fest is now happening virtually, but uh, now we're opening back up, which is why I'm actually in our space today because we're trying to figure out you know, what the social distancing programming look like out of here, especially gaming related stuff. So wow. you'll find a lot of cool stuff here. So I would definitely share this website, Shannon, because um, okay. DreamYard Project is pretty much, you know, involved in anything and everything, social justice, the arts um, and programming. And they have a lot of cool resources and tools for educators on how to do racial equity work when it comes to education. Where is that located at on the website? The I will show you right now. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people are working on that right now, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So if you um, if you go to the home page, mm -hmm. um, there should be a link across the top that says "Join us against the fight for against racism." Yep. Okay. That should take you to the website where you can. Um, kind of look at all the different things we do around that. And then they also link you to other tools and resources. Oh, cool. We will definitely check that out. I like the poetry. And then also if you go to the uh, DY Hub link across the top. Okay. Under um, connectivity and teaching. Okay. There's um, uh, some of the programs that we're currently uh, working on, but yeah, take some time and look through there because uh, there's a lot of really cool um, uh, resources for folks that intersect with like anti-racism, uh, you know, racial justice and uh, programming for communities. So the youth that you work with, they're all based in the New York area? The youth that I work with for DreamYard are all in the Bronx. Um, uh, right, because that's where we, you know, we started. That's where DreamYard began. However, after 10 years of working there, right, and, and identifying this need, I started the Bronx Gaming Network to connect all of the kids from the Bronx, right, to that broader audience of young people and folks uh, around the country. So with the Bronx Gaming Network, I've been able to start working with young people in California and Texas. I had some folks, uh, some kids and parents that I was working with in Massachusetts. Recently, we've had volunteers sign up from North Carolina. We had some folks from Utah, like uh, oh. recently volunteers uh, from the UK are beginning to sign up, but it's all because 
we started using Twitch. <laughs> Not the only reason, right? There's obviously a lot of reasons, but the moment we switched platforms and mm -hmm. we were like, let's tell the world what we're doing, kind of like what you said with that gentleman who had that plan. You mm -hmm. know, you think nobody's gonna watch, but then <laughs> they show. Yeah, they do. Or on YouTube when, you know, it's, it's funny to me to see all of the different things and topics people talk about. Now there's people who have an eating show. They're just eating on YouTube. And I'm like, no one's going to watch that. But then they get a million views. Yeah. Or people who have plant collections or people who are just showing their home, home decor. You mm -hmm. know, it's just like book to people just talking about books and the books that they're reading. Yeah. Yeah. And so much more. It just interests me that, you know, so many people have different things that they want to talk about and how people connect with that information. So. Yeah. And then to be able to like what I what I'm excited most about this is to be able to focus the work at a local level. Right. Yeah. Because like, yeah, you have you can sign on to YouTube and see somebody eating, you know, this great meal. Mm -hmm. But you could also go and look at, you know, someone eating a meal from the most popular restaurant in your neighborhood, yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. and then watch them talk about it, you know, like and I think that the appeal is there. However, we can't reach that international audience until we learn how to master our local viewership, yeah. um, which is what's happening. So my theory of change is if we really want more black and brown and underrepresented folks in the mainstream and kind of influencer, you know, influencing at a larger level, what we need to do is increase the amount of content creators, um, right? Mm -hmm. and, and decrease the amount of content consumption, right? It's not that that we got to all of a sudden stop, right? I want to encourage anyone who is everyone. And again, my work focuses with young people, but this is for y'all too, right? Like I work with parents who want to stream as well. I work with, I recently had a grandparent who was very upset that their nephew, you know, lives, you know, across this other side of the country, but their nephew plays like Fortnite. And she came to me, she's like, do you, can you teach me some Fortnite? I was like, listen, I would love to. But the idea <laughs> is because there is much more to be done here. And regardless of whether you play or not, if you understand the value of content creation, of viral ship, right? Or of uh, creating viewership, I want y'all to hit me up, hit me up. These are the conversations that I wanna talk about, man. Like I'm not talking about, you know, informal, you know, like, no, like I wanna talk to you. So if this is, if this is something you're interested in doing, you're trying to start a YouTube channel, you're trying to create content to make a business, this is what I'm here to do. And I, I personally, I know that I don't know who's gonna, you know, where it's gonna go, Shannon, but I, if anyone you hear that is interested in this, please, please send them my way because this is real. This is a real career pathway that a lot of people aren't aware that they can actually use while they're doing what they're already doing. Yeah, that's so true. They're not aware that it's a career. Um, so hopefully our viewers are watching and you know, maybe there is something similar to Dream Yard here in the Washington, D.C., Maryland area. I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to be on the lookout now and hopefully I can bring them to the show. Um, but a lot of our young people need to, you know, understand, you know, how social media works, how marketing um, on that platform, on various platforms work, because it could lead to employment or it could lead to be something that they're really interested in. Um, so yes, thank you for that. And I love your website. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been talking at a lot of things today and my throat just said, no, not today. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very intrigued. I'm definitely going to spend some time on the website and hopefully our viewers will too. And, and, you know, too, Shannon, I was, uh, I'm very interested in, I was talking to, um, you know, a, a colleague of mine who actually put me in touch with you, right? So uh, the PG, what the PGC, right? PGCML, mm -hmm. um, for that particular library system, like I, one of the things we were talking about in this conversation was, what does it look like for us to, let's say, connect New York City streamers and content who are already doing this, right? Wow. With a few folks, because my interest is what if libraries went around and trained their own local stream team, you know, like, mm -hmm. what would that look like for a library to, let's say, take five to eight, you know, young people or staff members or whatever that may be, train them to create content and then create live versions of the events that are already happening, right? So I have a student who loves reading to kids, 
right? And what they do is they'll go on and they'll do weekly readings on Twitch where they'll flip through the books, right? Like they'll do whatever they do. Story it's, time. It's, it's, it is, it's exactly that, right? But there are also libraries because I grew up in the library system myself, the Langston Hughes Library in Queens, New York. And mm -hmm. what happens is that there are times where you go through and there's a really cool program that's happening, but I couldn't go because my mom's wasn't, you know, there and I had to, you know, but I can just jump on Twitch and not only watch it, but engage because of the live component, right? Which means oh. I can now chat or use Discord to jump into the voice call <clears throat> while you're there, you know? And I think there are different ways to do that. And libraries, I think mm -hmm. before schools have much greater uh, value from doing something like this because schools are bound by a lot of policies around social media usage and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But libraries do not you know, like y'all have your own, you know, your own requirements and stuff, but there are ways that there are things that libraries can't do that schools can't, but if libraries do it, it'll be really, it'll be much easier to break into or help schools adopt similar programming. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing that up. We have um, a group of teens that we're working with, of course, on the internet, you know, they're not able to come back to the, the libraries mm -hmm. right now, but they were volunteering, so they were able to uh, volunteer online. We're trying to get them to help with some of our programming. Um, so we're working to do that. But yeah, I would love to talk more about other ways that we can help um, get them introduced to, um, what did you say it was, emerging media? Emerging um, media training. So, yes. <laughs> So um, we do have a teen advocacy group. I think they're called TAG. So um, they work, our teen action group, I'm sorry. They work on various projects with the library, but I'm pretty sure there are some things or some platforms that they would like to get introduced to or that they could use. So definitely after this, I will connect you with the person that's over that group and maybe, you know, you two awesome. can work together. <laughs> on um, some things they will be happy to hear because they're always looking for things to do with teens. Um, it's hard to engage teens sometimes, but I think because we are virtual, it's a little bit easier, but mm -hmm. I know they're always looking for different things to do. So thank you for that. And if you are a teen and you are interested in this group, um, contact the library and we will definitely get you connected. I know you need volunteer hours. So um, please say, I want to be a part of TAG, just call our call center and they will connect you. Um, so thank you for that. Let me see if I have any other questions, Rudy. This has been like, we got off topic a little bit with the questions, but that's what I always love is when we start talking about relevant things that are happening right now. Um, so the questions is just a guide for us. So um, I appreciate the conversation. Um, you, you pretty much answered a lot of things that I had to, to ask you today in our conversation. So that was awesome. But now that COVID has happened, you know, I always like to ask people, uh, what has happened with your ability to work with people at your company or your organization during COVID? How has it changed things for you? You're muted right now. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I can't believe a year in and that still happens. Um, uh, I, I think the biggest thing was I'm used to being in person with people, you know, all of our events, we all used to hang out and, 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 and do stuff together. And then COVID happened and that didn't happen anymore. Um, but then it's because of that, that we then turned to Twitch, right? And kind of started figuring out, wow, where is everyone hanging out that's not Zoom or Google right. Meet? Yeah. Um, and Discord and Twitch was where we go. But as far as the company's concerned, it's all been virtual. Um, however, it has not, you know, changed the way we do our programming. Okay, awesome. Um, is there any other interesting aspects of what you do? Um, is, you know, do you want to share anything else about that? Um, I think because my career and this particular career pathway is so different, um, right. I think uh, the most interesting thing about it is finding a place where you feel at peace with knowing that the goals and objectives of the role that I have, right, are up for me to decide, <laughs> right? But that can be stressful, right? Because there's the, the role that you get hired for that you apply to, right? That you know exactly what you need to do. And then mm -hmm. there's the role that gets created. Um, and a lot of roles in emerging media are that. You know, mm -hmm. like right now we're explaining, exploring the role of a gamer sitter, 
<laughs> what what <laughs> you know but the thing is that before babysitters everybody knows what a babysitter does but now there's gamer sitters and what is that <laughs> how much do you pay a gamer sitter what does it mean and i think that that's what's cool about this particular pathway so um folks interested in trying to explore not just careers in emerging media but just also building their own careers off of passions um i think you should give it a shot give it a go and 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 see you know where it takes you Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's such great advice. Just try and explore things, um, you know, be open to new things. And right now, you know, with COVID, we were kind of pushed into the digital world. Some of us, you know, had never done Zoom. Um, we knew nothing about some social media platforms, but now, you know, we're having to jump in and, you know, really explore that. So viewers, um, I hope that you are listening today about this digital world we're living in and that you explore different platforms. You might have to do an interview on Zoom or you might have to um, do your application online and you can't physically go in. Um, so just start getting used to some of these platforms or you might have to use these platforms on the job. So um, start exploring, seeing what's out there. If you have a young person in your home, a lot of times they're using these uh, platforms in school and they would be happy to help teach you how to use them. So, you know, that's my advice to a lot of our people who don't want to engage in the digital world. I know there's some still out there, but I'm encouraging you to just give it a try. Okay, well, the last question is for me and it is what are some resources the libraries offers people who are new to the job market, maybe changing careers, are looking for new work due to the COVID-19 emergency. And you can visit us at our website at pgcmls.info. You can go to our online library. You can visit our jobs and careers section, our brain few section, and then you can <clears throat> go to career assessments. You can search for jobs. You can create resumes, cover letters, and get feedback from a live job coach on our job now section. There's also resources for veterans out there. Um, maybe you are a high school student and you need help trying to get into college. There's college entrance exams there. You can brush up on any skills or job skills that you need support with. Um, and there's so much more. So try to visit our website. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you are a PG County student, you can use your student ID. That number is your library card number. And the last four digits of that number is your PIN number. And it'll give you access to our resources. Rudy, it's been a pleasure. I enjoyed having you on Thank the show you. today. I learned so much about what you do and it's got my mind going now okay when I'm back you know mm -hmm. in the library when people can come in which we're working on right now is allowing people in slowly we can do some of these things with our teens and our young people and now when I see a, a young person on the computer gaming or immersed in what is the emerging media I'm going to start <laughs> having a conversation with them about <laughs> how they can use that or how they can look at different platforms um, you know, to get more experience in that area for future, you know, jobs. I'm so glad. <laughs> Shannon, thank you so much for having me. Like, honestly, having other adults and, and educators and people doing this work willing to talk about this means the world to me. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, and I, I thank you for giving me this opportunity. And yes, please ask them, you know, what, who are you streaming for? <laughs> you know, like, why do you play? You know, because I think that the more adults that ask our young people that, the more the stigma is taken away from, you know, like from them doing what they enjoy doing, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to stop yucking their yum. <laughs> yeah, because there's some advantages to it. I, I, I think. But I'm moderation, gonna, though. Yes, moderation. Moderation. <laughs> and then maybe taking that and saying, okay, I see you like playing Roblox or, you know, some of these other games. Now, let me introduce you to Twitch. Have you seen Twitch or have you seen this platform? And let me show you how you can use it in different ways because you know, our young people, they're not going to walk away from the digital world. They love it. They're immersed in it. Let's use it to our advantage. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Shannon. Have a wonderful day.
Yes, you too. Thanks, viewers. Again, join us again next time as we explore a new and exciting career each and every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Again, I'm Shannon Crooks, your Librarian 3 at the Hillcrest Heights branch. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.